We're heading to Oshkosh, and what goes up must come down, so why not learn to land with a little grace in the simulator? Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. We're on our way to AirVenture Oshkosh, and we're departing Indianapolis, heading towards Chicago. We waited out the bad weather we flew through, heading into Indianapolis, and now it's a perfect day to be flying. Chicago is a busy area, so we're landing at a class Delta airport called Gary Chicago International, KGYY. I think that'll be a great place to explore the topic of landing in the simulator. You know, the stick and rudder aspect of landings in the sim just don't translate any useful skills over to the real airplane. I can practice touch and goes for hours in the Cessna 172 SP on X-Plane, perfecting my descent, round out, and flare, only to get in the real Cessna 172 SP and finding that my landings haven't changed that much. Landing practice is good chair flying though and it can really help learn your various checklists, your approach speeds, and the general flow of the landing. I'll link a couple of my blog posts about chair flying down below. So now that we've convinced ourselves that landings are a vegetable, meaning they can be good for us, in the sim, here's the top reason I practice it in the sim. Whatever I might be working on, it could be approaches, a pleasure flight, it could be chair flying across country. Finishing with a nice landing is just so much better than a botched one. I enjoy the gameplay of the simulator as much as I enjoy learning things, and putting it all together makes a downright pleasurable experience. Let's cover a few elements in the landing phase and see if you can either learn something new or improve your landings a touch. If you're a simulator-only pilot, you might be curious about some of the nuances of landing and how you can apply them to the sim. Even if you're an airplane pilot and have had training on landings in real life, I have a couple of simulator-specific thoughts and tips here that maybe you could enjoy. I found a great little plugin over at xplane.org that's really good for what we're learning today and it's called the Landing Speed Plugin by ASO and this file installs just like we learned about a couple episodes ago with X Checklist. You download the file and you put it in your Resources Plugins folder in the Xplane main folder and this uh, pops up with a little box that basically shows you what your uh, landing quality was. It gives you a textual landing quality. It'll tell you excellent landing, good landing, uh, things of that nature. And then it also gives you feet per minute at the moment you touch down, which is kind of nice to see as well. And it also gives you what your uh, G load was. So uh, it's just a nice little added feature to have as you're landing to kind of look over and see, hey, what's the opinion of this plugin? Now's a great time for subscribe checklist. Make sure to like this video and let me know you're watching. Subscribe to the channel and keep up with all the videos and comment if you feel so inclined. Love chatting with you guys. We're starting our landings on the downwind for runway 1-2 here at Gary. And this is a great airport to practice at because we've got the lake off to our right and we've got some nice visual points for helping to guide us. So let's go through the basic setup for how we're going to do a landing starting from downwind. When we're abeam the numbers, we're going to pull our power back to about 1700 RPM in this airplane. And this little pond over to our left is a great resource for telling when we're abeam the numbers so we don't have to move our views around too much. We'll go ahead and put a notch of flaps in and we're going to hold our altitude level until our airspeed bleeds off to about 85 is what we want to fly here. And then we'll start to go ahead and let our vertical descent come in and we'll start to descend. Now this little complex of buildings that's just off to our left, kind of off the nose here, is a great place to turn, I've found, in this traffic pattern. So right as I get close to the edge, or to the end rather, of these buildings, I go ahead and bring a turn in to the left for our base leg. I'm watching to make sure I'm staying right around 85 on our airspeed. Also watching our power to make sure we're staying around 1700 RPMs. And we can adjust that if we need to, but these are kind of the basic configurations that are going to get us down in a standard scenario. Now that we're on base, we can go ahead and put another notch of flaps in. We can fly about 75. So still 1700 RPMs all the way down here. But now with two notches of flaps, we're going to fly about 75 works well here. And it's hard to really judge and see when you're going to turn final without again moving your views around and then it's easy to get out of whack everywhere else. 
but these big white buildings are really helpful uh, for trying to judge when that turn happens at this airport. And now that we're on final, we'll go ahead and put our last notch of flaps in, and we're looking to fly about 65 as we come in. At this point, we're looking for a nice stabilized approach. For our airspeed, we're using our pitch to control that. So if we get a little bit slow, we actually just push over and nose over a little bit to pick up that airspeed. And if we're getting a little bit low, we're going to add a little bit of power to get back up to where we need to be. As we approach the runway and the threshold, we'll go ahead and start working that power out slowly, making sure we don't get too slow. To where now that we're coming over the threshold, we bring our power all the way out. We're just going to level off. We're going to fly straight for a moment. We level off, and as we start to lose airspeed, we're just going to touch our wheels down. Now another tool we can use to help us land is our ILS, our instrument landing system. And if we look at the approach plate, 108.75 is our frequency for this localizer um, for runway 30 here at Gary. So 10875 I have plugged in down below in my NAV1 and I'm going to flip that into the active. We should see the needles come alive here and let's go ahead and if we go in and click NAV1 up on the audio panel we can hear it. And we can actually tune that. So now we are tuned and identified. Turn that NAV1 off. Now what we're seeing here is our localizer needle is our vertical up-down needle and that is showing us if we are left or right of course. So you can see um, if the needle is to the left, we fly to the left. This is very similar uh, to VOR navigation in concept. So you can see now I'm flying left and I'm actually going past the course. The needle is now swinging right and now I can head back to the right to re-intercept that course. And you can see the runway way off in the distance, just a little bit up there. So we'll work to maintain that localizer needle to the center. Now, the, the reason this can help you learn is because if you've got your localizer tuned in, you can use the localizer as kind of secondary guidance. Don't focus so hard on your localizer if you're trying to create a good landing um, in the sim. Look down and you can see that it's, it's showing that we're on, um, that we're lined up so keep it coming in and, and let's look back visually and see what we've got going on. Now I've loaded up a 10 mile final to runway 30. So lots of, uh, lots of distance on a straight in here. We could do a three mile final if we want just the last little bit. But what this allows us to do as well is to intercept our glide slope. And our glide slope is gonna be this horizontal needle that's now coming down. And so what we're going to try to do is, is that glide slope comes across horizontal, we're actually going to start heading down and riding with it. And ideally, if we're flying around 90 knots, adjust my power here, if we're flying around 90 knots and around 500 feet per minute, that should hold us on that glide slope. So let's go ahead and see if we can establish around 90 knots here at level. And as that comes in and we intercept it, will establish a 500 fit per minute descent. But again, if you're learning to land in the simulator and you're learning what a nice long approach looks like, use the glide slope and the localizer simply as a tool, not a crutch. So don't try to chase those needles. You can worry about chasing needles when you get to the instrument stuff. Um, right now, there are glide slopes coming in, so we can go ahead and start a nice little descent. And you're basically flying towards the needles, right? So our uh, localizer swinging to the right will fly a little bit to the right. The glide slope is a little bit high, so we need to arrest our descent and essentially fly up. But again, I'm looking out at the runway right now, and I'm trying to learn this sight picture so that as I'm coming in for a landing at an airport, I'm seeing, hey, what does this look like? You know, I've got a nice 90-knot approach, 
I've got a 500 foot per minute descent and you know if I'm doing a visual approach here I'm gonna want to get some flaps in at some point and start setting up for that so I also have our Pappy our precision precision approach path indicator and those are those four uh, lights that we see to the left of the runway um, if we've got four white lights that means we're high and then as red lights start to come in that means that we're getting on down low. Four reds mean we're too low. Ideally, we're looking for two white and two red. And you can see right now, we're picking up our airspeed a little bit, so we want to slow down on that. We need to arrest our, and then we need to get our descent in check. So this is just all a way to practice your landings and not worry so hard about exactly what the instruments are saying, but more to learn to do this visually, because that's ultimately what you're going after, unless you're in instrument training, which is really where it comes in handy. Um, is to fly these instrument approaches and you can set your clouds down to minimum so you're flying only on instruments. But to start, just try it visually. Now you can see we've got four white lights, so we're high. So what we want to try to do on our approach is use our pitch to control our airspeed and our power to control our altitude. So if I like where my airspeed is, which I don't, so I'm going to pitch it back just a little bit to slow my airspeed down. And now I'm very high, so I don't want to adjust my pitch for that, but I do want to power back some to let that come on down. Now, they're not completely independent of each other, but if you think of it that way, that's going to help you better control the airplane. You're going to have to make minor adjustments to one and the other and uh, give and take a little bit. But ultimately, now we're back to about 90. We can go ahead and get some flaps in here if we want and kind of now use this to be more of a, a regular visual descent. Now take a look at the glide slope. I'm very high of the glide slope and our Pappy is showing us that. We've got four white lights to show that we're high. So we can go ahead and pull this power out to get where we want to be. If we start getting too slow, we need to pitch over though. So we got a notch of flaps in. We can go ahead and put another notch of flaps in. Airplane's going to want a balloon, so we want to maintain that nose over watch our airspeed, making sure we're pitching for that. Now as we start coming down, we've got a nice descent rate. We can go ahead and anticipate that descent, put a little power in before we get too low. If we got a thousand foot per minute descent rate, we're going to blow right through that two white, two red bar glide slope path. So I think I just saw a little red pop in over on our Pappy. Get a little bit slow on our airspeed, so I'm going to go ahead and nose over a little bit. And I'm also going to have to compensate with a little bit of power because I'm going to lose too much altitude. So we've now gotten fairly low on our approach. <clears throat> but all this to show you how to make adjustments as you're coming in. Ultimately, you're wanting a nice stabilized approach. If you're having to adjust your airspeed or you're adjusting your power too much and uh, you're on final approach, the best thing you can do is to go around. And if we don't like the way that looks, we're going to power up. We're going to start slowly working those flaps out. In this case, I'm liking the way this is looking. We're going to pull our power back. We're going to level off. And then we're going to pull back to flare, maintaining our center line. You can see what did it grade us there. Good landing is what it graded us. So I've just loaded up a three mile approach to runway 30 and what we're going to demonstrate is what happens when we come in with a little extra airspeed. So let's go ahead and start to get configured. We're going to put a notch of flaps in and really when this is likely to happen is when you're cruising and you're heading to an airport and you really don't plan your descent well and you don't start coming down in enough time and you see the runway and you see the airport and you say, oh, I'm still at cruising altitude, I gotta get on down. And you start to bleed off your altitude, but it just doesn't do the trick. And you find yourself coming in and you're high and you're fast. Get another notch of flaps in. We wanna try to make everything else normal like we've been landing, but just with some extra airspeed here. So we're still high. got our four white bars. Now when we level off, we're going to have a lot of extra energy to bleed off. 
And we can bleed that energy off if we maintain um, a level attitude above the runway and, and let that bleed off. But what's real easy and, and real tempting to do is to go ahead and, and start a little bit of a flare and you end up bubbling up. And at that point, you're slow and you're kind of high above the runway, and it's easy to really settle down hard or worse, just depending on your scenario. Let's go ahead and get our last notch of flaps in. All right, so we're nice and high. We've got some extra airspeed. And instead of holding this off level, I'm going to show you this kind of traditional bubble that's so easy to do. Kind of aiming for the runway here. We got a lot of extra airspeed on us. We go ahead and level out, and we're so eager to get it down, and we just want to put those wings down. And we end up kind of bubbling up. And then you lose your airspeed, and then, oh, what happens? Landing. Ha! <laughs> Anybody survive, it asks. And of course, not very controlled. And what we should have done is, at the point where that wasn't a good stabilized approach, we should have full power gone around, stabilized the approach, and tried it again. I hope today's helped you learn a little bit more about landings in the simulator. I highly encourage you to load up the airplane, either here at Gary or at your favorite airport, and just fly the pattern a few times, or load up some three mile approaches or some 10 mile approaches. It might be a little bit messy at first, but I think you'll find that you're going to master your yoke or your joystick. You're going to become more familiar with the key commands and the checklists. It's really going to help you enjoy the simulator more. And it might spill over to the real airplane as well. Maybe you find that you know your speeds a little better, you know your checklists a little bit better, or you've just more rehearsed on the flow of the whole thing a little more. Next week, we're going to continue our journey on up to Oshkosh. We're going to play around with a scenario, an emergency scenario. We're going to take a look at what happens when things don't go quite as we expected. Until then, enjoy your flying.